Welcome to this special IAUG webinar, Now Generation 911, Batteries Included, Get Ready to Flip the Switch. I'm Mark Fletcher with Avaya Public Safety Solutions, Product Vision and Strategy. Today we'll be looking at E911 and how it works today, Pitaflow and the Next Generation 911 Evolution Revolution, a new element in your network called the Emergency Location Management Server, how we deliver data from devices or the MLTS. We'll say goodbye to Allie and look at new federal legislation that may be coming down the road soon. We'll talk about the cloud and where it's appropriate and tell you about some new must-have resources for the telecom manager. Before we talk about next generation 911, it's important to understand how 911 works in today's network. When a station places a 911 call, the calling line ID is presented to the local carrier network. In some cases, that calling line ID is screened on a 911 call. When that happens, the carrier may convert it to the main billing telephone number. Should that happen, a generic address will be displayed to the 911 call taker. In some cases, a station may not have a direct outside number, and in that case, an invalid or null number may be sent by the PBX. In these cases as well, the carrier will insert a main billing number on 911 calls, and that's done in an attempt to make sure that they're routed properly. Unfortunately, since every telephone number has a unique entry in the database, substituting the main billing number on an emergency call also effectively hides any specific station level location that may be associated with the user's specific phone number. So with next generation 911, how do we convey the information to the PSAP? If the caller ID is no longer relevant, there must be something there to replace it. That something is a brand new acronym called PITAFLOW. So exactly what is PITAFLOW and how does that solve my next gen 911 problem? PITAFLOW is presence, information, data, format, location, object. Okay, so exactly what is that in English, please? The PITIF location object is a piece of data that resides inside of the SIP header. It can contain location by value, I'm at 123 Main Street, Summit, New Jersey, as well as additional information as location by reference, which says, if you go to http colon slash slash a4f3ee821c6df1.sos.anycompany.com, there will be specific information regarding this call waiting for you, as well as other multimedia content and information. Now all of this is delivered via normal port 80 web traffic and sits safely behind the firewall away from prying eyes. Now the PIDF can come from any SIP device that receives the information from the network via the Enterprise Location Manager, or ELM. Whatever 911 solution you pick in your enterprise should be able to take on this new role of a PITAFLOW server, so that any network device that are capable of sending PITAFLOW can obtain the information from the network. In addition to SIP devices having the ability to send PITAFLOW directly on the 911 call, we still have the issue with non-SIP devices such as analog or digital telephones as well as H323 devices and manufacturer specific IP protocols such as Nortel's Unistem. Instead of excluding these devices, the PBX will operate in an on behalf of mode where it will create and manage the PITAFLOW content that it transmits inside the SIP header. Now although the PBX can create the SIP header on the outbound call, the data that needs to be contained in that header needs to come from the Enterprise Location Management, or ELM server. Now this can occur in two separate ways. The first is when a device registers. The ELM is made aware of the registration event, performs its discovery routine, and locates the device through database correlation, IP discovery at the subnet or switch port level, and then returns the appropriate information to the call server, which can then form the PIDA flow should an emergency call be made from that particular device. Another mechanism that could be used is for the call server to query the ELM server for the PIDA flow at the time of the emergency call, where real-time information could be then inserted. In either case, the PIDA flow location object is presented to the ESINet, where it can then be delivered to the appropriate PSAP. Many PBX systems today already have the ability to communicate via SIP trunking. 
and location information is already present within the data infrastructure in the network. Therefore, the batteries are already included in what you own today. And it's simply the data insertion mechanism that needs to be added to be next generation 911 functional. So as you can see, the key element moving forward becomes the Elm server. Now that's not the name of a specific product, it's what we call a functional element on the network. It's a device or mechanism that provides a specific function to your local area network, similar to a DHCP server that provides IP addresses to devices, or a DNS server that provides domain name resolution for devices. The ELM provides information about users, devices, location, environmental data, as well as event correlation. Event correlation could be the examination of temperature sensors in the area that a 911 call was generated from, or the correlation of other data coming from intelligent building sources. A good example of event correlation would be a user dialing 911 to report a fire. Before the 911 call taker answers, the user drops the phone and leaves because of the excessive heat. Today, that's a dead air 911 call that needs to be investigated. Correlating that 911 call with temperature sensors in the area could provide additional information indicating a high heat condition. That can deliver additional contextual data that indicates there's an emergent condition. And ultimately, speed response by public safety, as well as internal first responders from the enterprise. So because we're delivering detailed location information via SIP with the call, Annie and Alley databases automatic number identification and automatic location identification are no longer required when the originating endpoint or the PBX are attached is capable of sending contextual information and the references to additional data like floor plans, environmental data, video feeds, hazardous material safety data sheets, personal medical information if the user allows it. The point here is whatever solution you buy today must be ready to take on this new role in the future. Don't buy legacy fire sale technology. Annie and Alley databases are no longer required as they're replaced by Pitaflow. In a recent meeting sponsored by the Tennessee Emergency Services Board, they stated that the Tennessee ESINet database is going to be open for individuals to manage their records free of charge. That'll allow a lot of enterprises to finally say goodbye to recurring PS Alley fees. Because of this, don't be fooled by solutions that embed Annie and Alley into the Pitaflow. True that this uses next generation 911 circuits, but it is not next generation 911 data. One of the first questions many people ask is, what does the legislative landscape look like? And like any good legal answer, the answer to that question is, it depends. As of right now, only 18 states have a reference to multi-line telephone system or PBX systems. And none of these states have a penalty for non-compliance with the exception of Michigan, which doesn't go into effect for another four and a half years. Many will argue that OSHA maintains that you must have a safe and maintain a safe workplace. If it can be proven that employees are not able to dial 911 in the event of an emergency, that workplace is not a safe environment. Now, the likelihood of OSHA shutting you down because your telephone system did not properly handle 911 is probably a slim one. Although, should they decide to make an example of a company, the fines can be enormous. Is it really worth taking that chance? The real problem is liability. We live in a very litigious environment today, and it would not be difficult for even a marginal lawyer to prove the lack of 911 or the delayed response caused by how 911 was programmed being a contributing factor to an injury. If nothing else, that'll put your name on the front page and in front of a jury of someone's peers who may force you to dig deep into your own pockets. The Department of Homeland Security is currently planning and evaluating technology to build the National Public Safety Broadband Network, also known as NIPSPIN. Recently, they announced the formation of FirstNet. FirstNet is a government-owned private agency similar to Amtrak or Fannie Mae, and the role is to deliver this new broadband network for first responders. Think of it as the highway that will deliver new and emerging data to our nation's first responders. Now, having the infrastructure to deliver this new data is certainly an important step in delivering next-generation 911 communications. However, the content that will travel on this infrastructure is the real critical mass. 
Based on this, the Federal Communications Commission just recently issued a notice of inquiry to the PBX industry regarding MLTS location-based 911 call handling. Avaya and some of its DevConnect partners filed comments to the FCC in response to this inquiry. Avaya also provided guidance to Nina in their response. Nina filed their own very strong comments to the FCC. They summarized their stance, stating that, quote, MLTS location capabilities are feasible, and the FCC should begin a proceeding to establish a time frame for mandatory implementation, close quote. Now, if nothing else, that's a clear message, that federal legislation is needed and recommended by the industry. It's also an indicator that support for next-generation 911 services is achievable today and will provide explicit data needed by our nation's first responders. As we flatten and consolidate our networks, legacy 911 becomes problematic, mainly due to its localized nature. In its current state, geographically localized trunking is required to reach the proper PSAP. Avaya Select Product Partners, 911 ETC and Conveyance Systems, provide a hosted 911 infrastructure that provides localized connectivity to almost any PSAP in North America. This allows users to eliminate local trunking, provide full support for UCAS environments, and provide a next-generation 911 environment that is in full compliance in all states from a regulatory perspective, including on-site notification. This solution also provides 911 coverage for remote home offices, nomadic soft phone users, as well as remote offices with minimal or no local trunking. With many technologies moving to the cloud, should my E911 be in the cloud as well? Well, today, any location can be located anywhere, and that includes the cloud. Where a specific technology is located is entirely up to you. You need to develop use cases for both rainy and sunny day operations. If you lose external networks but have survivability, where does E911 go? And if you become isolated, will you still be notified of on-site events? That may be difficult if the entire solution is in the cloud. This is why E911 is not a configuration task. It's an engineering exercise, and it needs to be thoroughly thought through. Hardware can be minimized. Software can be virtualized. Whatever you decide, be sure that you understand the risks and rewards. Education is the key tenant behind Avaya's public safety presence. We maintain weekly industry-leading podcasts and blogs that demonstrate our mindshare and technical acumen across the portfolio. You can find out more information about Avaya at www.avaya.com forward slash public safety, as well as my Avaya Connected blogs at www.avaya.com forward slash Fletcher. At Avaya, we take public safety seriously, and employees maintain active memberships with several international industry forums. Our subject matter experts maintain the NINA ENP certification, and contribute on several key standards and committees, including the President's NSTAC, the Federal Communication Commission's EAC, the MLTS PBX model legislation, Next Generation 911 ESI network designs and additional data work groups, as well as the Next Generation 911 transition plan. Internationally, we support the European Emergency Number Association, where we've contributed to their eCall ENA operations document, as well as other relevant papers for Next Generation 112 services. I appreciate you watching the webinar today. And remember, you can follow me on Twitter, at Fletch911, and my weekly podcasts are available at Fletch.tv. Thanks for watching, and good luck in your deployment of Next Generation 911.